advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are continuing uh, with Brad's top 50 solo games. If you are just checking out this video, uh, Brad has made a list of his top 50 solo games of all time. Uh, the reason that I am not doing this is because I am not a solo gamer. Um, so, and Brad is, so uh, it would be interesting for everyone who does play solo games to see what uh, good ones are out there. So, uh, Definitely go check out the 50 uh, through 26, but here are, according to Brad, the top 25 best of the best of the best, sir! And you're gonna love all of them, I promise. I guarantee you I will hate at least 12 of them. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> all right, so. Golly, how many I hate. <laughs> all right, so to start off, my number 25 <clears throat> is a game that you own and you like. Oh, okay. Nope, so. I hate it. <laughs> And that is, if it will go down, come on. You broke it already. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I, I was oh, like, okay. So, uh, yeah, Subterra. This is one, one that I had always kind of had my eye on, and then you keep talking it up on your lists and stuff, so I found a, a copy of it. And <clears throat> this is one of those games – I don't think I'm going to like the the new one as much as what Subterra 2. Yeah, cuz I like the the theme of this one just makes more sense with the you're in you know, you're underground um when and then that the, the best part of this game bar none is when the lights go out and you're rolling the dice at the end. Yeah. Just try just trying to make that last <laughs> ditch effort before you just, right, just like trying to make it out that yeah it um i played a prototype of subterra 2 at gen con a oh, couple yeah. years back um it's good like from what i remember it, it it they went for a different theme like uh i think they went more of the action kind of indiana jones kind of idea yeah. instead of horror it looks like lava and stuff but i don't know that's what it the is. box reminds me of. okay yeah this one just uh, you know that's and th this subject matter creeps me out anyway because i hate being in a dark just picturing being in someplace like that and it going pitch black oh god yeah <laughs> yeah so so um this does a really good job of that and then you also have your <clears throat> there the, the the different i guess you call them heroes the, the characters that you can mm -hmm. be they have different abilities you know and you're tossing the tiles out so it's it's one of those kind of exploration deals but once that once your uh, lights start going out, that's that gets nuts. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you just gotta hope you can roll good. <clears throat> yeah, um, which which I think on the channel um, is how how it ended is for the run through was literally just me like abandoning my my team and I'm just like <gasps> just running through. Yeah, I think it's, I think no. Oh, yeah. I was gonna stop just saying it's intense. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what puts this on this list is because when you play solo games, a lot of times um, tension necessarily isn't necessarily there, and True. this one brings the tension. So it's yeah, that's what makes this a good uh, solo experience. I'm assuming whenever you play solo games that aren't solo, uh, right. like solo uh, variants or something, uh, I'm assuming you only do like two people, or do you run like full full player count? I will generally, uh, I try it solo first with one, okay. just to see how it plays pure solo. Most of the time I settle on two. Okay. But depending on the game, like I said with uh, Fireteam Zero on the last Oh yeah, list, you do three. Um, I run three, it just, you just kind of test it out and see, cause yeah. some games require cooperation more, you know, some game, it just, it just depends on the game and how okay. much longer it makes the game go. That makes sense. Stuff like that. This one right here, it plays good with one or two. You know, oh, I, right. I've done it both ways. <clears throat> good to know. So, yep. So, uh, anyway, Subterra. Yep, good game. 20, 24, DC deck building game, Rebirth. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, this the Rebirth, this version is the um, cooperative version of the game. So, um, it uses – more or less the same base mechanics of the DC deck building game, which take it or leave it. I mean, it's, it's a good deck builder. It just doesn't make much sense on a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Um, but what this one does 
is it brings in locations. You have standees with your characters, um, and it's a campaign. So it, there's little envelopes with cards that you unlock and it, all the stuff like a normal legacy type style game. It's not, it, it's a redoable legacy in the game though. You don't tear anything up, but um, <clears throat> you pick a hero or two in my case, and you travel to different locations around the city because there's minions or villains at each one of those spots. And you're trying to accomplish whatever the, the uh, campaign goal is at that point. <clears throat> and as you build your deck, you can, you move on to different scenarios, unlock m multiple stuff. This was what, this, this is what they should have done earlier with the game. Yeah. Um, it still has that hokey, um, where you're, you're getting cards. Like you may be Superman, which is who I generally do. And you're getting Batman's cowl or a batarang yeah. or something in your deck. But the difference is the, the worst part of the DC deck building game was when you defeated a bad guy, they went into your deck <clears throat> and then ha and gave you stuff. So I, that, I guess just because maybe you had the experience of it or whatever. Um, but this one, they don't, you beat the bad guys. They don't go into your deck. So they got rid of that part of it. And, and it does a pretty decent job of, of campaign storytelling on this one. Um, the reason it's this high on the list is because I, I like this style of deck builder, even though the theme is a little disjointed just a little bit. So it, it plays mm -hmm. really smooth, um, throwing in the spatial awareness of going to different locations and stuff and making that mean something um, kind of puts it up a few notches. It's, it's a fun one to play. <clears throat> All right, good deal. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have much much to say on this one. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of DC, and then yeah, there's Marvel I, Legendary, so it's just kind of like it's one of those things. It could have been any theme, to be honest with you. I, I like yeah. I like deck building. I like this kind of deck building, so it could have been anything. <laughs> it could yeah. have been, you know, the Powerpuff Girls or whatever. It's gonna play. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just adding that little location movement and campaign stuff right. to a deck builder is kind of kind of good <laughs> all right <clears throat> so my number 23 is oh, chronicles awesome. of crime um this Indeed. one is is a uh, one of those games I, I haven't even scratched the surface as far as all the stuff that's out there on this right now um, i've kind of jumped around a little bit on different things um mm -hmm. this one it plays really good solo better sure. with more people with at least one more person yeah um just because that way when you're looking at stuff and you're saying what you see you have somebody that can be looking for the car you know and stuff instead of you looking and pick it you know it kind of <clears throat> it takes you out of the uh um out of it a little bit when you're looking at the scenes and stuff and right doing different stuff but but other than that i mean it's it, it it's awesome with the deal. I mean, I've gotten far enough where I even take the, I take the, uh, the case I have on my phone off just so I can use the VR. <laughs> the it's VR so thing. cool. Yeah. It's so, so cool. Um, and, and what's nice is cause I actually played this, uh, relatively recently and they don't overdo it, you know, right. like not, you don't have to do every location cause I, then I would kind of think it's a little much. Um, but cause it's, so they did a really good balance of VR with, uh, with still keeping the detective theme. Mm -hmm. And I like how they jump. The themes that they've chosen have been really cool so far. Mm -hmm. Just doing the, you know, the one, the base box versions and then going with the red view, which is kind of like a, the uh, Stranger Things kind of stuff. Yeah. And then the, the noir one is is cool. Um, I've messed with the 1400 a little bit. I haven't gotten Same. it. Went, I haven't tried the 1900 yet. Yeah, 1900's <laughs> out, isn't it? It yeah. is. Yep. So... It's just really neat. This is something they could just keep plugging, plugging boxes oh, yeah. of stuff in. I mean, this is Lucky Duck is is a company to keep keep an eye out. I mean, the the newest game they released, Destinies, mm -hmm. um, is basically a competitive RPG game. Yeah, that uses so, the, the 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 QR code kind of thing stuff. Yeah. But this does. Um, that's one I should have backed. I backed for a dollar, and then I just never got into the pledge manager. 
people are talking wow. it up. People are talking it up now. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna find out whether it, whether it plays like tomorrow. So yeah. I'm excited. I've been hearing good yeah. things, but if you don't like it, let me know because I'll give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Twenty three Chronicles Crime. This is my favorite of the crime games that I've played. Mind you, I haven't played Detective yet. Um, that's one that my wife really wants to get into, so I'm trying to find a time. Which to, one? The Detective City of Angels? Or? Right. No, the oh. de- Detective, the Portal Games one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Does she have a uh, like interest in Cold War? Cold War? In the Cold War? Uh, I don't know. Not not like... Okay. Because they just released the Vienna Collection, which is in their you know Detective series, but it's right. a campaign. It's a, like a four part campaign. Oh really? I mean, I, she may. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what her. I mean, we watched. We've watched uh, um, Chernobyl. Okay, <laughs> that's about as Cold War as she. You know, sure. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I I flip back and forth between this one and Detective. They're they're both really really good. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Detective would be fun. I just, it's hard to get her. I don't want to do that one solo. I want to do yeah. that one with her, but, but she, you know, I've said this many times, she doesn't like cooperative games anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to find a time to get it kind of. Right. Because I think she'll get hooked on it once we get started. Yeah. Because she likes crime shows and all that stuff. So there but you anyway. go. I mean, it, it's right. basically that. Yeah, exactly. So. But uh, but yeah, anyway, you know, this is one of those games that is always going to be on a list like this because it's innovative, and as long as they keep putting stuff out, they even have DLC. You know, I forgot to say that yeah. too. I mean, they can put DLC out and everything. So, so yeah, uh, 23's Chronicles of Crime. Good so Twenty two is Elder Sign. All right. This one is one that I've I have never. I've actually, I don't, I think I played this game once with somebody else. Oh, okay. Um, it's, I've pretty much played this solo every, all over the place since then, you know. Um, this is, it's a, it's a, got that Yahtzee mechanic, you're chucking dice. It's got this stupid ass, annoying, annoying thing where it only came with one set of dice and they never <laughs> sold extra dice. Um, I, have been tempted multiple times to try to find a super cheap copy of this just to get another set of dice. Yeah. Um, because it's annoying past those <clears throat> around if you are playing with somebody else. But, uh, but yeah, this one jumps all over the place. Like the core game was very limited. Um, and the first expansion at a little bit, but it was still kind of limited. It's when they branched off on those next, um, expansions where they brought the theme in where they were going to locations and there was uh, things happening that would pop up and you'd have to deal with and it, it gave it more theme and story um, that's when it really started to sing um, it got more complex mind you but but uh, it's still just a, a great game Th- this one will get passed by Arkham LCG for sure yeah uh, just because that system is just completely set up to for solo and being better and stuff. But again, this is another Richard Lanius game. I said there was going to be more. There's more on the list too. But uh, but yeah, this was my first um, Lovecraft game. And uh, I still have it. I have everything for it all in my nice big museum, wooden crate, yeah. and all that cool stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's, this is just a, it's a, it's a hard ass game too. That is for sure. Very, well, very, very because difficult. it's all luck. <laughs> well, that, the but there, there, there's a lot of ways to mitigate it too. It's just, it's just hard because, you know, I don't know. It with, <laughs> without getting too far into it, it's just there, it, there's a whole snow uh, snowball going down the hill thing. It just keeps building and building, and you can get overwhelmed quick if you don't deal with the stuff that keeps popping out. Right, right. Yeah, this one was one that I tried earlier on in my in my hobby hobbyist career and uh just this didn't do it for me at yeah. all yeah and, the, and there's a lot of arkham games out there you know that this yeah. whole arkham horror files like it says in the box you know there's all these fantasy flight games that are arkham now and i True. think i think they've taken all the stuff from all those other arkham games and they've kind of fine-tuned it and it's like here is our 
our prized possession and it's the Arkham LCG right now. So, yeah, you know, if you want a big grandiose game, you play Elder Tor. If you want a refined uh, card game, then it's LCG. Well, and the LCG is almost getting grandiose. I mean, you can turn it into that if you, you know, That's the true. way, the way, I mean, I haven't gotten that far in the campaigns, but I can just see how it's just going to keep getting ramped up for sure. Yeah. All right. So my number 21 is the other Richard oh. <laughs> Pontius game, Defenders of the Realm. This one is just on here. It's just the classic. Um, this was the one I'd said from the very get go. Like I think pick number 49, when I talked about pandemic, the cure, this yeah. was, this was another game that uses that pandemic foundation as far as with the taint and the, and the, uh, the, the, the minions when there's so many minions in a spot, they yeah. spread and all that stuff. It's, um, I, I'm kind of was torn. I really wanted that second edition to become a thing. Yeah, but but now that I got everything for the first edition, I I'm almost kind of glad it didn't because I love this art and I'm afraid they would have changed it because this is oh, my without favorite. a doubt they would have put it. Like, <laughs> well, because Larry Elmore, I don't think he's alive anymore, so it, it would have had to have been stuff that they took from him, uh, from other stuff if they were going to use this kind of art. No, they just get the artist from uh, Descent. Oh God. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I would hope Eagle Griffin Games would would because they seem to be pretty solid on on that stuff. But yeah. but this this game is just um, this was an early game for me when I got back into the hobby as well. Um, they did such a good job with all the hero classes because if you have all the hero sets and everything, there's so many like unique. Um, like the eagle rider you know a little little hobbit eagle rider guy or uh, you know and there's just all these different classes that you can be there are really cool and and the dragon expansion is is hard as hell insane. when you get doing that and you know it's this is just one of those games yeah you know it, it it's shows its age like the board is really confusing yeah, <clears throat> it, until you've played it enough to understand it because the locations are kind of hard to find on the board and stuff like that. But, you know, that's one of those things after you play it a couple of times, you kind of figure that stuff out. And, Were the yeah. minis pre-painted? You could get them pre-painted, but most okay. of them, mine aren't. Um, okay. Are your dragons colored? Uh. I feel like whenever I, think, I owned it, the, I think, the dragons were colored. Like the bosses were had had color. Well, I don't think they're the ones I have in the dragon expansion weren't necessarily colored. They were like kind of like that blue dragon on the cover. You know, they were like they were all blue, but then they had like white plastic or something on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It wasn't. I mean, that was all only painting. It wasn't like they painted anything else. It was sure. just that part. Um, yeah. But yeah, and and this is just one of those nuts games where you just you're rolling fistfuls of dice by the time you you know get <laughs> get to those bosses and you just gotta hope you hit that certain threshold and this is a difficult game i just this this art cover is so confusing you look at it and you have the four the four heroes like the the warrior mage and then like the, the halfling and then the, the lady with the crossbow and it's like all right i get what they're doing and then you look at the dwarf and he's just behind the dragon, like direct bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. He snuck up. But then you look at the lady on the far right and it's like, what is she even doing? She's, yeah. That, that's, that's a, that's a mace or a mall or whatever. And it's like, yeah. why are you just over there crouching? Like, <laughs> Maybe she's a healer. She's waiting for somebody to get fucked up and then she's going to go heal him. See, <laughs> I mean, that would make some sense, but that doesn't look like a wand no, or a no, staff, so I don't know. No, that, that dwarf back there is waiting for those other guys to kill it. He's going to be like, that still only counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, I love, I mean, I, I do like this art. I still would have liked it to be updated if they did a second edition. But uh, just looking at that dwarf, he is just, he is shredded. He, it's like, is that even his armor or is that just how jacked he is? He has his own armor. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just like ripped. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, and you know, they could do stuff like, could you imagine? And I don't know if this would even be a thing, but 
you wonder if they could do like a Lord of the Rings cover of this game. Like you could. Yeah. I mean, you, you could have, just have do like the heroes or Kai, or, um, right. the Easterlings or it, not Easter, Westerlings. I can't remember. Um, like, and then have the Nazgul. Uh, yeah, you, you could. And I mean, it probably, you just don't have um, whatever they call the gems in this one. They just, right. it's corruption right. or it's darkness spreading. And then you have Gondor in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you could you could very much just re-theme this to Lord of the Rings. Because Lord of the Rings high fantasy anyway, which is what this right, is. Right, exactly. But, so, so that was something. I'd pay a shit ton of money to, to have a re-theme Defenders of the Realm yeah. of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that would be pretty neat. But instead, they did another cool thing, and they're going to use the basis of this game and go with Freedom 5, which is going to be pretty badass in its own right. Yeah. I have a feeling from watching playthroughs and stuff. Yeah. Um, throwing these mechanics and adding on to it with a campaign story driven deal and throwing it into a modern superhero universe will be yeah with the sentinels of the multiverse <clears throat> yeah that's going to be pretty sweet with all those sexy pre-painted minis uh, and everything <laughs> well yeah I'm going to be excited to see what they look like because I have the street fighters miniatures yeah so I'm going to have to compare them and be like oh oh who's is better yeah too bad they aren't the same company because those street because uh, you'd know that they really look look really good if they were like the street masters or street uh, uh, street fighter. Yeah, that's true. But uh, but yeah, Defenders of the Realm. It's just one of those games. It's always going to be on here for nostalgia, and it you know it just plays well. You know, yeah. It's it's a simple game to control multiple heroes on as well. Cool. So all right, so number twenty, the top twenty solo games now. Wow, Imperial okay. Settlers. I didn't think this was going to be on the list. Yeah, you would think, you know, because Imper- uh, Empires of the North, with the with the little solo, uh, cam- not campaigns, but the solo little missions scenarios. or whatever you want to call them, scenarios, yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one still just, this one still just gets played more. You know, it's like, it's it's simple to just set up the, Hey, there's my little buddy. Um, just, just to set up the uh, uh, the barbarian deck and just go to town. You know, it's 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 a simple solo game, really. You know, um, yeah. you're just building out stuff. I mean, it's <clears throat> the simplicity of this is why it got up here, and then just throwing in the fact that they're your um, your faction, the the factions decks are so cool you know with being able to use those other ones now empires could pass this if they keep coming out well you know they keep coming out with the the, the egyptians i need to get the barbarians you know as, as long as they keep coming out with stuff yeah. i could see it passing this now i have not tried the campaign for Same. this yet um just to see if it, that would it, what that would do i mean i'm not really doing it any favors because it doesn't look like it'd be fun yeah <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I mean, I got it because, just because, but yeah. I I just need to make myself sit down and try it and see how it goes. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, when it kind of kind of comes down to it, I, I still like the gameplay of Imperial Settlers over Empires of the North, um, but but I do like the solo variant of Empires better than this one. And I think that was because when we when we played both of these, both of them together mm-hmm. that one time, you know, I was. Empires of the North was the one I leaned towards. Yeah. Um, but after sitting back and playing both of them and everything, <clears throat> I, like you, I like the mechanics of Imperial Settlers still better. Yeah. Um, it also didn't help that I had the decks super bloated. Yes. Uh, yes. At the time, because I threw them all together. And now, yeah, now I, they're I just rushed. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad time. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, now they're all organized because I have the big box for Imperial Settlers as well. Yep. Yep. So, I didn't need. I didn't get the big box because you gave me your old broken token insert, and that's fine. That's right. Yeah. So, so, uh, but yeah, Imperial Settlers just for simplicity's sake. I mean, it's going to be one that's on here because I probably have played the solo of this probably more than most of the games on this list, just because I've had Imperial right. Settlers forever. <clears throat> um, all right. Anyway, nineteen. 
Boom, boom. Wow. Awesome. Yes. Good deal. I love, I love this damn game. I, I just, I started playing it like, oh, a month ago, I think. Yeah. And it wasn't even on this because I've had this list made for a while and I had to go back through and knock everything back. Yeah. <laughs> just like, because this game is, has been so cool because I love apocalypse, post-apocalyptic stuff anyway. Yeah, that's right. And then throwing in all the different themes for post-apocalyptic and throwing in the decks and all the, just everything. And I, I love the fact that, that every uh, character that you choose has their own like 30 card deck, Yep. you know, and they're themed for them and everything instead of it just being a, a few cards with a generic set, you know, set of cards and everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of games end up doing that. Right. And I love the, well, especially this legendary edition like that we have, you know, it has all the wooden little bits and the, mm. the, and, the and the minis and all that stuff. It's, it's just, I mean, you open this box and there's like 800 and plus cards in it. It's, it's so many cards. Yeah. So um, many different apoc- apocalypse yeah, scenarios. Bugs and zombies and, and kaiju and aliens and all kinds of stuff. And then, and then with this, uh, new kickstarter that's currently going yeah um it's a standalone but it could also be thrown in with this stuff it's it's bringing in that interesting uh it's got weather um aspects and stuff oh okay i I haven't looked at it yeah it's like there's like a whole weather winter like if it's if it's snowy like really cold outside you have to like stay warm and all this difference it brings in all these different deals and one of the night cards yeah and the one thing that just got uh um, is getting ready to be unlocked, or maybe it has by now. I'm looking at it is, right now. Is the next, uh, the next um, apocalypse is like the, uh, it's it's like COVID. It's a pandemic, yeah. Yes. I just saw and they're like, they that have not timing, unlocked but... it yet. <laughs> okay, it's they're 180,000 for pandemic, <clears throat> and uh, they're at 179. Five. But but there hasn't been details about it that I've seen. But did you see? It makes a little comment underneath it saying that your characters have to maintain social distancing. Does it really? Yes. So. Oh so, my god. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell it's going to be like. But just just stupid stuff like that, and and it's so. Uh, it's it's just unique, like to have this base system, and to just be able to throw any of this stuff. It's the th- the theme of it just drips. Yeah. Um, well, here's what they also did that was pretty cool that not a lot of games do is um, it's becoming a lot more common. But in this one, you pick a character, and both sides have the male or female. Yes. Um, for it, <clears throat> and uh, I mean the the character I always want to play is the veteran. Because mm-hmm. he uh, he gets a dog. Yep, yep. And I'm just like, yep, yep. <laughs> if this dog dies, I will end my own life. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's everyone plays their part, and it's another cool thing where if you if if a character dies, it doesn't end the game. It's just that you know, okay, you're just continue. Yep. And so I like how most are all of them are like, you start here, and you need to get the van. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, and it's just like. So you don't really win. You're just moving to another place, <laughs> you know? <Right>. So, <laughs> That's true. So uh, I don't know. It, the art, um, I like the art personally. Yeah, very comic um, booky. Yeah, and stuff. And it's just, I don't know, man. It's, it's just uh, some of those cards and those decks are just awesome too, you know? And they, they definitely go on. There's some blood and blood and guts and all kinds of fun stuff in there it's yeah this is one of those games i'm i i'm glad i kind of fell into because i i kept seeing it and i was like oh that doesn't really look that great and right then, same yeah. and then i uh yeah. i think i was looking at it and i think i asked you and you said it was mm-hmm. good so then i looked into it a little bit more and uh it's it's a it's a great thank one god this sure. company has this this game because their other game i played lawyer up is uh, <laughs> poo. It's just poo. <laughs> is that a, a little hint for the worst of 21? Yeah, well, yeah it's, it's, it's a slight hint. <laughs> yeah, 2021 has been pretty good and bad so far in terms well, of games. I get my opportunity to play Lawyer Up here in a few days. so <clears throat> You let me know what you think. <laughs> or don't. I'll be excited to see it at the end of the year. Yeah. 
But anyway, so my number 19, Maximum Apocalypse Legendary Edition. So, 18. Good deal. <clears throat> Era, uh, Medieval Age. This is one of those, um, you know, I've, I would have put, before this game, uh, Roll Through the Ages, Bronze Age would have been on here. Um, yeah. <clears throat> this game totally killed it. Like, I sold it. Sold that as soon oh, as wow. this. Because this game, it's not as brutal um, you can control the brutality in this game, which I know you didn't like in Bronze Age. So you're I rolled still... playing three times in a right. row. There's nothing I can do. But, but here's the problem. Here, here's the, not the problem. <laughs> this is the thing with this game is when you're, you, you roll, right, and you gain resources, on Bronze Age, you had a piece of paper and you just marked a box saying, okay, I'm, I built this, right? Well, this yeah. one has all these 3D buildings and you have a plastic grid on the table and you get to place the buildings within your walls. Now, the buildings all have abilities. Some abilities will set off and maybe make plague less, you know, or whatever. But when you do plague, plague kind of fires off and uh, could cause you problems. So if you're really cramped, your city, and you mm. roll plague, it could be bad. So you, you, can, you can mitigate that by sp spreading your stuff out to where it's not that big of a, so it doesn't like totally ball you like, like you did that one time. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, like, well, Chad, when I showed this to him the first time he built his city, so crammed, like every, there was not a space left in there. And then he rolled that deal and it just crushed his, his oh. deal. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, but it's, his it's people got, not wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> medieval age. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, they were wearing loincloths over their face. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah this one's really cool and then i have the uh expansion the rivers and roads expansion so that adds where you get a river in your and then it, so it there unlocks a few buildings like a i think one of the buildings is like a a water like a water propelled food granary thing or something like that you have the expansion um, don't you i have all i have everything for it I, so the, the rivers and roads expansion is the big box expansion that came out and then they have these these little boxes, they're like yay big. Okay. Um, they're called collector set one. There's three of them. There's collector set one, two, and three, I believe. You have to buy them from their website in Europe. Um, and uh, it adds like a couple, like another set of little buildings and a card, just as little extras. The cool thing about when you get that Rivers and Roads expansion and stuff, there's actually a, there's like, stories like it's not a campaign it's like scenarios that you can set up and there's like an objective so different things may uh, get you more points you're trying to achieve something um so it, it gives you a little bit of a direction so you don't you're not playing the same thing where you just roll and you're like i'm gonna build i'm gonna make sure i have four uh farms out here to make this much so there's different things that you, you have to try to accomplish kind okay. of like <clears throat> so okay. it's really <clears throat> i really really love this game it's it's i love the 3d aspect of it you know it, it's yeah when you see it on the table and you have your stuff built it's just, just awesome so this is one i need to bring up too right <clears throat> yeah it's on the list okay so uh but yeah this one for sure is, is a winner um good deal so yeah, yeah i like the box car the box art as well <laughs> yeah yeah and then it's i've actually thought about because the, the the grid that you're um buildings go on as yellow um yeah some is like some people have been painting them like brown or yeah. green or something like that <clears throat> so yeah i definitely like saw there. some um yeah some pictures of people who have painted all their their stuff and i'm like that looks pretty damn good it does i just don't have the patience for that <laughs> sure so but anyway that was my number 18 definitely a good one for solo because there's no there's hardly any player interaction. So it's, I mean, you're just right. building your stuff, especially with those scenarios. You're just trying to get those scenarios done. True. <clears throat> All right. So 17 Everdell. This uh, one a sexy game right there. Yeah. And I don't own it right now. Cause I sold all my stuff. That's right. <laughs> because I'm getting the massive box of greatness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. It's going to be so nice. Well, it was one of those things. I, I just had this in Pearl Brook. And yeah. I wanted the other expansions, but I'm like, well, I'll just sell that stuff. Like I did the last time I was up there with you, yeah. I sold this stuff and I was like, and I'll just 
put that money towards the big box of awesomeness and and get all the collector's edition versions because I just had the retail versions. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, the solo play with this is is super smooth as well. It has you have your uh, uh, D four, I believe, right? Is it D four? Uh, it's a D eight. D eight. Yeah, okay. there's there's two rows of four. Gotcha. So so you roll the the D eight, and then that card goes away. And I mean, it's it's a simple version, but the 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 thing with this game is you're tableau building and trying to maximize your your area. So right, um, it doesn't need a whole lot of, of, uh, AI help, you know, I mean, just getting rid of some cards that might screw you here. It might not, you're going through trying to maximize your stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not super interactive, but I, it, this game just doesn't need it. I mean, this game's good enough. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know what else to say on this one. It's just this, this game was one that I always passed on because I was like, I, I really, don't care for animal type things, yeah. you know, like this. But then I played it and I was like, damn, this is a good, <laughs> one. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, yet another one that you introduced me to. Um, what can I say? I have good taste <laughs> in games. <clears throat> but, uh, well, the thing is you, you, you buy enough games that, that, you're bound to fall into a good one every now and again, That's right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> are, they're, they're bound to be good ones in there. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is, and then I'm sure, I think you added on to those, those special like uh, containers, the oh, yeah. shaped containers, the themed containers. Oh, yeah. the, that's, that's the, this game. We've always said this game has always hit our lists, whether it's been art and box cover yeah. or anything. And, and this one just, kind of hits on on all levels because it's it's it gets it's pretty enough and simple enough that you can get non-gamers in to play it right but then it's also gamery enough for for gamers to play and stuff so yeah. it's just it was just a great design for sure yeah it's, it's definitely like i think this is going to be a um like it'll stand the test of time it'll be an evergreen it, oh <laughs> <laughs> wow uh but yeah i mean like how people talk about seven wonders 10 yep. years later i think to everdell is easily going to be that yep i agree all right so now number 16 is lost ruins of arnak now I this is this has the potential of gaining because of what we just i just showed you about an hour ago that yeah. cge finally came through and has released some of their solo campaign for this so this is number 16 just because of the solo aspect that was in the box the solo campaign stuff is going to be hopefully uh awesome they you know yeah. set games edition usually doesn't throw out too many stinkers so i'm kind of hoping that it's pretty solid um yeah. <clears throat> so this is one of those games this was my game of the year i believe uh last year um was it number one? Yeah, it was right up there. If it wasn't number one, yeah. I, I want to say it was number one, but okay. if it wasn't, it was two. It was just right there. But yeah. this game was just, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I, you only have like two workers, <laughs> you know? Yep. And, and you're just trying to maximize everything. You know, this is a whole... Um, like an almost like a it's not really really an engine building you're you're gaining resources and then uh, I mean, max it's a deck right but you're maximizing your turns by getting resources to do more things on your turn and to stretch oh, yeah. your turn out you know um <clears throat> and then uh it does have deck building deck building it's very limited deck building because the stuff you buy and add um you may not see a whole lot in your deck because yeah, i think you only go through your deck maybe a couple times maybe in a full game but if yeah. you buy the um what's awesome and the, the mechanic we've talked about this before the mechanic with the the artifacts that when you buy uh, the artifacts it goes right onto your uh the top of your deck i believe yeah right 
And then, if, but if you buy something else, it goes in your discard. If you <clears throat> get out of the artifacts, um, being able to put them right on your deck and be able to use them is, yeah. is awesome. And as you go, you know, more artifacts become, or less artifacts. Is it less artifacts or more it's artifacts? Less, it's, uh, it goes yeah, less. More artifacts. It's more, less. okay. So it moves away from the action, yeah. your items. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, and then, you, ha you know, you have your, your area over there of your, um, your research track and all that stuff. It's, this one plays good this way, but once that campaign, I'll probably try the campaign tomorrow um, just to see how it goes. But that's, uh, it's ripe for expansions as well as popular as this game is. Yeah, I will I say I do think it needs kind of an expansion to make the deck building a little more complex yeah because it, it is kind of simple <laughs> it is um, but i mean it doesn't need to go game busters but yeah just one expand like basically just a more content expansion yeah just more of those monster tiles the, ex yeah. the tiles that go out in the exploration more yeah. you know maybe something to try to make the uh um because this this game a lot of people have said this and i kind of agree but you almost have to go research if you're yeah you know um so there's there's a couple of different ideas mm -hmm. that they could come up with maybe to make other things you know a little more so that the research isn't like an automatic you yeah. know it's, it's that the the research track in this game reminds me of the uh the citizens stuff on orleone you know oh, like yeah. you know how like if you are doing that and moving up on those books and everything you're gonna do well you know yeah. so anyway this one is solid here it depend and it, the campaign solo campaign is going to have a lot to you know say whether this moves up down or whatever yep yep all right <clears throat> Good game. great game yes. and it's pretty <laughs> yes it is very very pretty yeah it fits the fits the indiana jones exploration mm -hmm. or expedition kind of theme really well exactly all right so my 15 is under falling nice. skies this right. one i still have not played all the way through it um because you start off and there's you have your locations to start with but then there's a whole campaign um oh okay so like when you get this box when i give it to you like the top stuff the top first top half of the box the stuff you'll play with at the beginning then if you want to do the campaign it's all the bottom half and you go layer by okay. layer in the box to all to right. do it but your different locations different stuff but pretty much what you're doing on this is there's gonna be a mothership at the top of the board it almost kind of looks like space invaders in a way you know where the things are kind of going down at you and you're taking them out and you are building, researching, and stuff down. You're going deeper into the ground as you dig, um, unlocking different things, more energy, more whatever. And then, um, but the pr thing is, is wherever you put those dice, like let's say you have a, you roll a five, right? Uh -huh. And you place the five on one of those deals, then anything in that, they're going to move five down. <laughs> so whatever okay. number but you're going to get more you get more for out more resources with that number but that stuff's going to move down that much faster yeah so it's okay. it's a really challenging game this is not an easy game whatsoever hey it's um, your second cge game as well <laughs> yes <know>. yes <clears throat> um and i bought them both about the same time too um this one was hard to find i i it may still be around now but i i got it uh, changing hands they only had like one copy and i bought it and it was kind of hard to find for a while but uh this one just kind of came out of nowhere you know because it's i wasn't really sure what to expect because it shares the same similar name as that one sci-fi uh tv show falling skies oh um, so I, I i watched that show and then i saw under falling skies it's like uh but uh yeah but yeah, there's just this one is very very strategic as far as what dice you're going to put where, how far you want to dig down. You know, is it worth risking to dig down further to to get this other thing for the fighters to start coming closer? You know, it's just it's a challenging game for sure. Um, 
and it's solo only. This is another one of those that is strictly solo. Okay. Um, box cover is kind of weird, but but uh, I like it actually. I was the, just looking. It's at not it. bad. It's just the the game, the the art of the components and everything when it's on the deal is is really cool looking. Okay. Um, and as you go through what the what the campaign does, I think you go to different cities. Um, so you like do Chicago, all these different places, and it's set up a little differently as you go. And depending on if you win or lose, stuff happens. I gotcha. All so, right. all right. Ooh, yeah. Give so, it a shot. Yep, yep, I'll bring it. Uh, so 14 is a kind of a combo as well. Yeah, it's Hero, <laughs> Hero Realms with the campaign expansions. Because uh, Hero oh, Realms in its own right is a 1v1 game. Yeah. Um, when you throw these two campaign expansions in, it becomes a cooperative solo experience. It's a light um, campaign because it's just a little book and you make a decision here and there and then you have you have uh, um, different objectives you're trying to reach and defeat different people and stuff but um, Hero Realms is such a slick game in its own right. I even could have put Star Realms the the Frontiers expansion kind of here. It's it's the same kind of oh, thing. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you just work through a little campaign. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a simplistic little campaign but it's yeah. fun to play you know you're you're building your deck you you have your own character you can level them up get artifacts get items um you can make him more powerful because they have their own special little ability cards you can increase the power of as you go um the ruin of thandar was the first one i've played through all of that one the lost village i played through all of it i can't really tell you which one i like more the okay. Lost Village was a lot harder, I think. Oh, um, so, you know, take it for what it is on that. But, but uh, these are just must-haves because if you like simple deck building, and it's not like these are this isn't like Gloomhaven campaign crap. I mean, this is just like this super super simple right uh, campaign setups and stuff. Um, and then if you have the nice big box with everything in it, that's always nice as well. It um, is very nice, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, this these are some of my favorite campaign. Campaign was fun. I did it for the the channel, and then uh, I mean it's good one v one as well. It is very good. No. It might be so on a one v one. What? I said it might be on a 1v1 list, possibly. Yeah, it might be. Um, but yeah, I've also bought everything for the Star Realms as well. I like Star Realms. I just play it on the app. I figure I just I just have Hero Realms stuff uh, just because, you know, they don't have an app for Hero Realms. They do for Star Realms. So. Right. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Hero Realms with the campaign expansions, those are – and it's a nice – cheaper way to get a solo experience as well because it's pretty cheap to get the True. hero realms box and just one of these things you know i will yeah. say if you do these though you need to have at least one of the character packs yeah so that's the, that's the downfall of this like you can buy the hero realms box and you can buy this but you can't do these campaigns without having at least one of those character decks right i mean they're all available like you can they start are. But it's just them. something extra you have to buy you know that's yeah but but yeah anyway that's my number 14 good deal all right 13 folk wow. affliction yeah. um this is one i've only ever played solo um i've never yeah. played it with anybody else i play it with two heroes um i've gotten to the second book um and i haven't gotten it out for a while yeah uh, but I just, this is just one of those games. I kind of, I like the feel of the, um, I know it kind of feels a little convoluted at times, but this I like the, mess, dude. <laughs> what's that? I think I said, this game is a mess. It is. Yeah. It's very, very, uh, clunky. Yeah. And Especially it, it, with a lot of the campaign games that come out now and uh -huh. it's just like, Oh man, I'm gonna have to fiddle with all this little shit on the side. Yeah. Yeah, and I like I like the fact though, you know, it it gets really fiddly when you get the miniatures out on the table and you you have those like blown up 
uh, yeah. parts. But when you're doing like the little, um, the skirmish battles where you don't mm -hmm. pull any minis and you're just rolling those dice, it, that's kind of yeah, nice. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, the crafting is kind of cool with how stuff goes. Um, and then uh, I actually haven't played this since I got the new expansion. So, cause I had the, the oh, Spires yeah. expansion in that monster box and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, this is just with the unique theme of being like the, you know, the uh, folk tale, European yeah, the, folk tale stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, I, the, the miniatures are still awesome. They're not the, mo the most detailed miniatures, but I'll keep saying this forever. As long as I play this game, having the names of the miniatures on the bottom of the miniature is just, I'm surprised that they're the, they're the only ones that do it <laughs> to my I knowledge. Don't it. I really don't. <laughs> I, it's like, it's, it's such a simple idea to, to do that for every other miniatures game. Um, but nope, they're the only ones I know that have done it. Yeah. And this game will probably take a very, very big dip in my, on the uh, list like this or in general, when, um, uh, Isafarian Guard comes out. Um, oh, really? Because it's Isafarian Guard is is a, it's a solo game. Mm -hmm. Like it, it can play one or two, but it, they recommend it for one. Um, oh. And it has the uh, it's going to use the uh, folk or the the Foreteller app for all the stuff. They have I think they said was it sixty hours of content that they're recording oh. or something oh. like that for it, and it's. Uh, but that game like that, and the, just watching the, the stuff, just all the all the deals with it. it, it it's just it's one of those things. I it's similar to this game, um, as far as the theme a little bit, and I think it's just going to kind of push this one back because that one's so much more minimalistic than this. Uh, this one has a lot of crap you have to deal with. Uh, the Isafarian Guard is it's bag building, and you use it uses the chip theory chips. Okay. And, every, and everything to do your actions and everything. So anyway, that's that game. That'll be on this list another time probably. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, this one is just on here because of the uniqueness right now. And it's just, um, it'll start falling, I'm sure, because I haven't played it for a while. Yeah. Just because it takes up so much space. And right now, the game that I'm, that's all around my computer right now is one that I've been playing more. So. Gotcha. <laughs> so anyway um all right number 12 apex theropod deck building game this is a very good solo game it, don't play it any other way nope <laughs> nope they, they actually did a disservice by not saying it was just solo only yeah um cause, well because technically it can be played with more than one but it's just not as good uh, <laughs> But yeah, this one is a solo game is just badass. Like the mechanics of it, um, you pick your <clears throat> species of dinosaur and you just go to town on it. You just defeat stuff. You're, you're, uh, you, you can mutate, you know, do all kinds of cool stuff, make yourself more vicious. Your deck you build can just become a, a badass. You can really have some power plays just like most deck builders, but but uh, you're just defeating stuff and moving on until you get to the the big bad yep. boss monster, and and they've got so many in this collect the collector's edition. It's it's got uh, so many different species, even ridiculous ones. And uh, the one thing I wish they would have done, and my only complaint about this game was <clears throat> they should have had a way to. Uh, you just like I think you recorded the me megalodon, uh, the yeah. shark. Yep. Um, the, the, they needed to have like enough content for the water versions yeah. to have water, <clears throat> a whole yeah, water like deck. Other predators, stuff. but when you right. think about it, it's like what other fucking predator is competing with the megalodon? <laughs> right. So uh, I don't yeah. ever mess. I don't ever mess with that. There's so many dinosaurs in that box that I just yeah, take out. Over. Yeah, take out the megalodon, the robot dinosaurs, and the undead dinosaurs, and you've got a thematic game. Hey, I don't know what the hell those mechanical. I don't know. 
Yeah, because I recorded it with the Megalodon, and because I, I was like, "Oh, that'll be that'll be fucking cool." And the Megalodon deck was really cool. It just every event, nothing made sense. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like forest fire. Wait, why am I being affected by this? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm in the ocean. How am I even like eating prey? And every now and then they would have a card of showing like something swimming in the ocean, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, that part makes sense." But yeah, it it just doesn't work because I mean, the whole premise of the game is you are trying to be the apex predator and uh, the the Megalodon is already that like in the ocean, like nothing else. The T-Rex isn't going to go in there to fight it. Yeah. And and I think what happened was because the company that originally did this game had all these, things they unlocked dinosaurs and i think this guy that bought got the license and redid the kickstarter he's from kansas city um he uh just took what they had they didn't really change a whole lot he just got it reprinted and and everything and uh i like what he did because well one of our chad denton he uh was one of the ones that got screwed over on the second kickstarter because they didn't fulfill to their backers um, and this guy went back and he uh, gave them, you know, one of the, they oh, gave him another collector's edition for back, okay. you know, so, but yeah, this one, as far as deck builders go, if you play it with the right dinosaurs, of course, um, they're just theme heavy. Like when you're the Raptors mm-hmm. and, or the T-Rex, you're just hitting hard or you're overwhelming them with numbers or, yeah. or whatever you're. It's, this is just a really sharp uh, – you know, and I love the art that they have on, mm-hmm. on them and stuff. So, but yeah, this is, this is one to definitely track down, especially since the Kickstarter uh, fulfilled not too long ago. There's copies out there now. Yeah, yeah, this was, this was a good one. All right. All right, number 11. Wow, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, this one, I haven't played a ton of it, but – and the amount I've played of this, it's totally – well, it made me get rid of Seventh Continent. Um, yeah. And it actually – I, For the record, I will say, I think you can own both very much. <laughs> they are completely different games. No, they are. But, the, and, but I – You can, you only have time for one. <laughs> exactly. And there's so much Continent crap for this like game. And I like hours. The, yeah, and I like the theme of this game. Yeah. Because you always talked it up so much. And I – I wanted to back it back in the day, but it was just one of those things I didn't. But um, now I have everything for it. Yeah. And uh, so I, it's just, I don't know. It's very unique. This mm-hmm. is the only Awaken Realms game. No, I have, t- I have this war of mine. Yeah. So, but uh, this one, I think I've played like maybe four three or four of the chapter deals. Um, But it's just, it's just cool. You know, how, Mm -hmm. how things go and how I like how the, the tiles come out and you have to pay attention to the numbers, you know, and how it kind of builds out, which is the, the seventh continent stuff. Yeah. But you can't go very far away from the, whatever the hell you, however you say their names. Uh, You know what I'm saying? Those statue dudes. Um, Yeah. The men here. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, the theme is cool. The art's cool. Um, this is one I'm glad I got into because uh, it was just it was just cool. The dark, yeah. the darkness, and the King Arthur theme and all that stuff. Um, yeah, the, this one will be the, one. the campaign. The the actual the writing is mm-hmm. really well done. This um, would have been one that that foreteller should have done. <laughs> um i actually disagree and the reason really? why is because it is situation based it's not a oh, okay. narrative driven campaign so you constantly have to be in the app like trying to find a number that's true um but, uh yeah the, the writing is exquisite the characters are awesome um and even then i know a lot of people's complaints feel that it's very uh grinding having to constantly go back to the men here's um, and I kind of see where they're coming from. It, it can be mechanically annoying 
because if you go so far away, then it kind of goes out and then you have to go back. And, but if you're really getting into the theme, then, uh, which the game very much elevates, uh, it, it kind of, it, it works. Um, right. And then I love the, the two deck building system, like Awaken Realms. I mean, I used to think they, they could do no wrong, but other fields, uh, yeah. is now, uh, that, that is their, their biggest flop for me is, is other fields. So I'm hoping ISS Vanguard is basically this, but in space. Yeah, I have no desire for ISS Vanguard for some reason. That I, I look at it and I, the late pledge is open now, and I'm like, I went back and looked at it again, and I'm just like, this just doesn't do anything for me. I'm hoping <clears throat> my my biggest hope is that it's as good as Tainted Grail, but it's kind of like a Mass Effect feel. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, but so I'm hoping it's actually not <laughs> incompetent like other fields ended up being. Yeah. Well, and this one is this will probably be right about where this one will stay because yeah. the stuff ahead of this uh, <clears throat> is pretty pretty locked in. Plus, I have other ones that are probably going to move up, like gotcha. Ar Arkham and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Oh, honorable mention. But, huh? Still, this is the honorable mention. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so number ten, hostage negotiator. The solo only experience. You know how um, I said I was going to dislike 12 games in your top 25? Yeah. There were only two so far, so obviously. Hey, there you go. Unless I hate all of, the, all of these, <laughs> which I don't <laughs> hate this game. No, you so. don't, you're going to like most of the ones I have. But so. yeah, this one is uh, an awesome solo experience. The games play quick. Um, I liked it before they came out with, with the uh, uh, career um that yeah. made that made it even cooler being able to have like decisions and story and <clears throat> and all that stuff it, it uh it was just one of those things that um you know there's it's got the dice thing which kind of is a pain in the ass but yeah but i mean it kind of brings in the unpredictability of being a hostage negotiator i mean you just don't know what these people are going to do <clears throat> and everything so I kind of look at it that way when I'm playing this, you know, you may have the perfect plan when you play this one card, but you know, if the, if the guy doesn't bite, then it's going to fail, you know, yeah. but uh, they've done a good job with picking the different, um, the uh, different criminals um, and all that different stuff. They're very unique. And uh, yeah. you know, I mean, they're, <clears throat> they're, this was one that had been out for a, quite a while and then I finally, I mean, decided, hey, I'm just going to try it out and loved it. But I, by that time, I had missed the Kickstarter for the careers. So then I went searching for that. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, this one, this one is, I uh, can't remember what's left on my list for sure. <laughs> this one might be the last of the solo only, maybe. Um, okay. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's solid. This one I, I actually just <laughs> sold. Um, mm -hmm mainly because I was just like, I don't see myself ever really being like, I just want to play that, you know. Um, I did the careers for for the channel, and I mean, it's fun, and this game is extremely solid. Just because I sell it doesn't mean it's a bad game. That's usually the case, but um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, the different, the different sus, not suspects, victims, or no suspects. Yeah. Um, abductors that's what they're called yes uh, are are unique the careers makes it really cool with like the career decisions and you can get like allies who who might like come help you uh and then like different you have personal stress and, and career stress and stuff like that so it does a, it does a pretty good job of enca encapsulating that negotiator job um but but yeah, it, uh, it, it's a good one. The, the dice, I had to take it that way too, was they, it represents the unpredictability. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hey, hey, you know, calm down. Don't go with the fucking calm down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're just like, so I resign. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it was just one I was late to the party for, but it's, it's an awesome, an awesome solo game. And I, I looked at my deal, and this is my last solo only okay uh, game so it would be my number one of those type of games i guess gotcha all right 
Good deal. All right. My number nine is Street Masters. Wow. Wow. Oh, um, I did not expect this one. Yeah, this one I love playing <laughs> just just because it's some of the stuff is ridiculous and I love the mod the modular deck system stuff for it. Mm -hmm. There's so many heroes, there's so many bad guys, there's so many different locations and everything you can choose from. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's nice. I usually I'll pick like two two uh, heroes and yeah. go after it. Um, but then they also have the uh, like their 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 story. You know the the each character has their own little story quest or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, so it's fun exploring all that stuff. Um, the, the theme of this doesn't necessarily grab me because I, I'm not that big of a street fighter fan. I mean, I don't hate it, but, it's, yeah. but, um, just the, the gameplay of it and all the content to it, um, makes this, this one is my favorite blacklist game, uh, right. for now <clears throat> and see what happens. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this one is, is, uh, it's just kind of wild, you know, with all the different dice and your abilities and your, uh, there's so many scenarios, different things you need to do, whether it's go and collect a certain number of things or just defeat the bad guy or, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, um, the, it's almost limitless replayability because of just all the different decks and all the different crime syndicates and all that stuff yeah yeah i agree this one is is awesome the 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 modular deck system that that they've created is so good with street masters and brook city and um even uh ultra quest i mean all three of those just utilize that system so well that you do have I mean, an insane amount of replayability. Like, so even if you took the same heroes and the same villain, but a different stage, right. and it's like, oh, okay, this will play different. Yeah, it, it, it drastically different too. I mean, it's yeah, because those locations have their own special stuff, you know, and exactly, <clears throat> it's just really, really cool, and the art's really neat on it too. And I like the fact that your heroes, they like whatever. I, well, there's a term for it, but it was like when they power up. And you flip right. them over and they have like that superpower deal, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. a neat, a neat little aspect to it as well. But, uh, but yeah, uh, my number nine is street masters. All right. Good All deal. Right. Awesome. Number eight, legendary encounters and alien deck building game. Woo! Um, <laughs> this one is, uh, it takes the, this was the first of the legendary encounters series. Um, so it took the basic legendary system, like with Marvel legendary, but then they added in the, the more theme to it with the encounters stuff, which spawned a lot of different encounters themes. This one I still think is the best, <clears throat> um, but you pretty much you're playing legendary, whether it just like if you played Marvel, Marvel legendary, but you're working through a, the movies of, yeah of the alien uh the four alien movies and then expansions you can get more stuff um the difference between this and normal legendary is uh the theme of it where in marvel legendary in the enemy row the cards would come out face up and you'd get to see what you're you're coming to take on and this they come in they come out face down and you have to spend a certain number of attack value to flip the card to see what's coming before it drops into your area and interacts with you. Right. Um, so there's a lot of stuff plus in that deck, you know, if you're playing, let's say you're playing the first movie alien and you're trying, you know, the very first, <clears throat> the very first objective, uh, cause generally the scenarios have like, I think two or three objectives that you try to go throughout that deck. The first objective is finding the turrets. So you, once you find the two oh, turret yeah. objectives, Hey, you've completed <clears> that. So now you get to jump into the next part, which is whatever, you know? Um, <clears throat> so you, the good thing is you don't have to play the movies with this. Like, but if you do, they tell you what heroes to put in uh, or what mm -hmm. characters to put in, what cards to put in just to make it just like aliens, alien, you know, alien three and four, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, uh, 
but um, you could tech, you could, cause I use all the same symbols in the legendary system. You could bring, I've never tried this and I want to, but you could bring like, you know, Hulk and Iron Man from legendary and put them on to put them out here and take on the aliens. You know, you can, because it uses all the same symbols. That'd be funny. So, uh, but yeah, it's, and they have, this game has so much more modularity into it too, because there's the part where, you can play where the first person that dies can play the queen, you know, oh, that's right. um, there's, there's a, a modular expansion that you, everybody has a hidden objective um, difference. I'd never play with that uh, just because I just play with the mo for the movies and stuff and go through there, you know, but yeah. uh, <clears throat> this is one, anybody I pretty much show this game to, they like it. I've never, I've never really showed it to anybody and I'm not like it. Um, so, I mean, you still gotta be a fan of, I think the alien movies to be interested in it. Yeah. Um, what drew me to this more than the alien movies is just being the, that deck building system. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because obviously I played Marvel legendary before this and then, uh, being able to play the movies is what kind of pulled me in on this as well. So yeah, but this is a great one. You know, there's expansions for it. Um, if you like aliens and you like deck building, this is almost a automatic. Um, oh yeah. Just because, you know, so anyway, that's my number eight. Um, number seven, staying close on topic <laughs> is the Marvel legendary. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one was my, obviously this is the first iteration of legendary. Um, this one uses the same base mechanics. As I, like I was just saying, other than the difference is with this one. I mean, there's so much crap out for this game right now. So much. I mean, and, Stupid and how much there is. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the, the replayability of this is, is crazy. Like, Think about the the alien game we just had. There's four movies you can play through, right? This one, there's uh, all these the uh, the scenarios. I can't remember what they're called. Um, uh, schemes, yes. Um, that uh, there there's a stack of schemes, <laughs> you know, just huge stack of schemes, and all those are a different way to play the game. Some of them change the game drastically how you play it, you know, and. Uh, it's it just you will never play the same game twice on this because you pick five heroes, you pick a mastermind. A mastermind generally will have a, a a group that comes with them, but then you pick a you pick all the little the little henchmen decks, and it's just. Would you like to guess how many expansions there are for this? Because I just <laughs> counted them. Um, let's see. Are you counting big box and everything? Yep. I would I would say. 13 25 25 That's i didn't 25 expansions <clears throat> yeah and i don't have the newest one um, the annihilation still, yeah i still need to get that one yeah um, i didn't even know they released another one well no i actually there, actually there's another one before annihilation's not out yet i think there's one app before that one i don't have oh okay that would be i think it's into the cosmos no i have that one maybe it was Annihilation. Asgard, realm of kings I don't think I have Realm of Kings. That might be the one I'm missing, maybe. I don't know. I need to look. But anyway, I mean, I have boxes upon boxes upon boxes of sleeve cards for this. And oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. My, mine are not sleeved, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, like I, every, every major card game, I've now just organized into the those broken token wooden crates. Yep. Yep. Um, I have three crates for the Arkham Horror LCG. Um, I have two crates for Marvel Champions. I am building crates for Aeon Zen. Uh, and then I think I have two crates of this one. Yeah. So it's just bonkers. Yeah. I mean, they literally have everyone. Yep. At, at this point, I can't, I mean, what the fuck does Annihilation come? Comes with uh, former foes of the Fantastic Four team up with Galactus and his heralds. Okay. So it's like almost like a read because Galactus is already in. Yeah, but it, I guess it has, yep, yeah. five heroes, two new villain groups, two new masterminds, and four new schemes. 
yeah, it's just it's just bonkers for sure. But uh, but yeah, Cryptozoic is actually uh, they're about to go on Kickstarter for the second um, expansion to Epic Spell Wars. I saw that. I, I haven't even played Armageddon yet. I need. It's that. a you mean Annihilation again? Or whatever. Yeah, I I haven't, <laughs> I haven't played that one yet. It's fun. It's uh, you'll like it. I mean, you like Epic Spell Wars and deck right. building, so right. So, but anyway, uh, so there that was the legendary part of my top ten. So, uh, number six is role player. This one, um, does have a really good solo. Yeah, solo. I mean, because this there's no player interaction besides buying first in the in the hey, well, uh, the drafting. The well, drafting. right. That's, a, that's a, yeah, but but um. That's this. That's why this one just comes down to really good solo. You know, you're just because yeah. um, I think, yeah, because you roll in solo, you roll a die and they take a die out of, out of the deal or something like that. I haven't I haven't played it solo for yeah. a little while, but but yeah, this one was okay solo by just base game, but then it just got even better when you threw in the expansions, um, added more theme to it, and more fun to it. Um, Again, this is a kind of a beat your own score kind of thing, really. Um, uh, it's, I don't think it's be. I think you're actually trying to match, like, oh, hey, if you got 115 points, you're this, you're a hero. Or well, whatever. right, that's that's what I meant. It's be, yeah. There's a range of that's scores. Yeah, yeah, but but um, but yeah, this one was one that I was also late late into getting. It had been out. The base game had been out for a while. <clears throat> and then I nabbed it around the time the Monsters and Minions was getting ready to come out. Yep. But uh, yeah, Thunderworks. I mean, this was kind of their coming out party because the the next iteration of this is going to be something that may end up being on a list like this when once Role Player Adventures comes out. Oh yeah. Um. So, but yeah, this one is just you're just creating your your fantasy character and rolling dice, placing dice, doing all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, it's pretty simplistic, but yet you have to put, put a lot of thought into it as well and everything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all I can say about that. It's, it's a, it's a great one. I like this much better than like Sagrada. This one beats Sagrada just because yeah. of the yeah. stuff and all that. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is a really good one. Yeah. All right, going to the top five now. Number five is my Aeon Zen. Awesome. Now, this one, I need to get into playing more for it to stay here <clears throat> because I haven't gotten into any of the uh, the story versions, you know, the New Age and all that stuff yet. I'm just talking like the first two boxes is all I've played. Yeah. <laughs> but the the uniqueness that comes with this game uh with your um the way your your deck runs you know your you uh the way you discard cards matters because you don't shuffle you just flip your deck over so you can kind of set up plays you know as long as you are aware of what you're doing yeah um also the uh uh, setting up your spells and preparing your spells to do awesome stuff, you know, and, and it comes down to the end so close so many times for better or worse. Um, but uh, I like that some people don't like the way that the turn order goes. Um, I like it. I like because, it too. Um, you could get, yeah, you could get screwed where the bad guys go at the end of the turn and then they may begin the next turn. You may get hit a bunch, but you know what? That's just kind of how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at how big the fucker is on that cover compared to you. You know, if he wants to go two times in a row, he can go two times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a <good> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it all comes out in the wash because you have more people than, he does if he goes yeah two times in a row then you're going to get to go four times in a row right, right. Um, and ultimately what he's going to do he's not planning you actually have the advantage of being able to strategize um so 
yeah, it's it's such a solid, solid game. And I I have played everything for it. Um, and Legacy is kind of bad. Um, I really didn't like the, the Legacy aspect, but um, it, it has a pretty good overarching story, which so I think this, for the story part, it's worth playing for because the, the, the New Age and... Um, there was another one Outcasts. where they had like, huh? Outcasts. Yes, uh, both of those continued that story. Um, it, it, you know, albeit just like in terms of like five games, you know. Right. Uh, and then the new one, the their latest Kickstarter, which is actually their massive story telling one, is yes. uh, is I think a continuation of that. And it's and there's you know that I I listened to an interview with these guys. And there's no end in sight. And I'm just like, my God. <laughs> well, they've essentially, uh, I don't even know if they had this plan when they made th this game or if they knew how successful it was going to be. They've essentially created the world mm -hmm. like, like Madara or Gloomhaven or, I mean, all that stuff that, you know, some games force down your throat. They're like, hey, new world. And you're just like, oh, I don't want to learn about your generic fantasy one. This one, they, they, Pretty much did it right. You get mm -hmm. to kind of feel what the world's like without having to read a, you know, lore book. So I mean, I I'm excited. If they keep pumping it out, I'll keep finding a way to store it. <laughs> Mine <laughs> still. I still have all uh, my legacy. Well, my legacy's not in shrink, but the other two are still. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I need to get them played at some point. But and that just tells you. I mean, it's number five, and that's just with the first two. Mm -hmm. No, no, no story really, legacy story or anything. I mean, this is essentially a boss battler game. You know, right. like on my, I, I did a top ten uh, games you can play instead of KDM because KDM is shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I put this one on here, and everyone's like, "This doesn't play anything like KDM." I'm like, "That wasn't my point." <laughs> Obviously, right. they are different games. My point is that in King Kingdom Death, you fight a monster, like, and try to beat it, and you do. Th that's all you do for this one. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's like there's there. Yeah, he has minions kind of come out, but they're really cannon fodder. It's all about his his abilities and his cards that uh, end up fucking you over so there, exactly it, there's so yeah that's all right uh, for you that'll work <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh yeah so that one will definitely once i start playing the story stuff it will either stay the same or you know go up maybe i don't know all right number four is too many bones awesome yeah. You have played this now. I have. So, did you play it solo or what? You play. You nope. and Cat played, right? Me and me and Cat have played it. It plays. I I would play with two characters playing it solo. So really, you have kind of played it solo in a way. Okay. You just played with two players. I mean, that's you get to and see. That's the who same. I play. Plinket <laughs> or Plinket or, or or whatever the fuck his name is. Shield guy. Pick it. Pick it. Pick it. I was getting yeah. close. I mean, um, that was close. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. This okay. game, uh, these are these all these characters are ugly. I yes. hate. I hate this race. <laughs> You're <laughs> so awesome. ugly. Yeah. Um, th this is one of those games. I mean, it's it was one that you know I never really paid a whole lot of attention to. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, I didn't really know much about Chip Theory games. I kept you know when I was at Origins. In 2019, they had that huge ass booth, yeah, with all the crazy stuff. And I kind of walked by and looked at it. And I just never, never paid attention to it. And then I, I something got somebody was selling a collection, and I decided, what the hell, I'm gonna jump in on it. And there's a learning curve, a little bit. Um, yep. But my advice would be to stick with a character until you get to learn that, until you know that character, because they have a front and back sheet of all their stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff the characters can do and their skill trees and everything. But once you kind of learn, get over that hump, you know, it's the little campaigns you do, all the, the you know, the exploring and the items and all the craziness that you get in here. Um, 
all the chips. I mean, you and I both have the the treasure trove box that yeah. everything goes in. It weighs like 70 pounds after you get all them fucking chips and play mats and everything. And it, <clears throat> it's just yeah. ridiculous. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, n- this is not one I would ever go more than two characters on. Um, I would. Sure. You would? I, I think I would. Yeah. It I just lasts long. Energy, I, I, mean, I play Gloomhaven with four. I, I don't, but I would like, yeah. I think, I think the games are built enough um, to where it wouldn't it, like like Marvel Champions. I would never play with four because there's not enough that the fight that the enemy is going to do to warrant having to, for it to be longer. Um, and but for this one, it's kind of like I think the synergy of the the characters would be really yeah. neat. Well, and what I've and I haven't ever played more than two characters, but what I've heard people on the forum saying that if you go three or higher, then it becomes way too easy. Oh, um, interesting. Okay. Just because you're just trashing them, I guess. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know, but that's just what I read. So I, I don't know that for a fact. Um, but they've got enough characters out now that there's all kinds of cool little things you can do. There's room enough in that trove for two more characters. So, yeah. <laughs> and they say they're going to, there's another more too many bones coming. So, but they've got to deal with their Elder Scrolls and and stuff first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, next year, and then yeah. that game's not coming out for another two years anyway. I know, but that's going to be fucking nuts. That's going to make so much money. But uh, Yeah, because it was just Elder Scrolls. It wasn't Oblivion. It wasn't anything. It's oh, Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah. Well, because so, they just said that this, the Hoplomachus making 950000 was their second biggest kickstarter and you know that elder scrolls is going to blow it up their first was splice and dice oh okay because it had all the extra it had the reprints and all the extra stuff oh i see so that was when a lot of people got into too many bones was at that point i got too um, many bones with uh their cloud spire expansion yes yeah yeah i just like how they do things everything no matter how much you buy ten dollars (laughs) shipping you know it's like you just can load up on stuff um at this point the only chip theory game i don't own is trip lock i think that little the yeah, little game they have. but uh i have everything else but yeah this one is just really cool um you know your little you the little mat fighting and your dice using your dice to stuff the, the good thing about this game and this is something that people that hate dice would like i think <clears throat> is when you roll misses your bones, then mm-hmm. you can use those like that. You can build yeah. them up and do something really cool with them, you know? So, yeah. so if you're rolling bad, you're still kind of getting, you know, something out something of it. For it. Yeah. I but, mean, each character has like their four ways they can be built. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, some of them, they tell you the difficulty of each character on, on the sheet and yeah, when Kat and I first played, I was like, oh, I'll pick, I'll pick Shield Guy. That seems fun. And she's like, I want to be the Bard. And then we're looking at it, and I'm like, oh, gosh, she's what the fuck is this bard. character played? Then I was like reading it, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, you're, you don't want to play this one. Yeah. Gilly is my favorite. I don't know who that one, is. That's the one that has like the wolf uh, and the bow and arrow. She, she was one of the add-on characters. That, oh, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> but because no, uh, Duster also has a wolf. Right. Well, not it's not. What is it that? Yeah, because he Duster has a wolf. Gilly has an animal. It's one of the animals. I can't remember. Okay. That might, might be a wolf or a bear. I can't remember. It's an animal, but anyway, whatever. Um, she's my favorite just because of the range attacks and the different odds and ends that she has. Her tree works really, really well. Cool. But uh, but anyway, my number four is too many bones. This one's uh, going to be a solid one up here for a long time just because yeah. it's a it solid. also doesn't have that much. Uh, like it doesn't take up too much table space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty right. concise, which I like. Uh huh. <clears throat> yep. All right. Now we're going to the top three. Number three. Wow. Ooh, wow. That's interesting. Guy, which I think is my number two game of all time, I if I remember so, yeah. correct. Um, <clears throat> this one is just such a such a blast to play. Um, I run two heroes. You know, it's got that whole smash up the 
the elder, the elder one and mm -hmm. the, the episode and you just go through and play. I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's pretty simple setup and you just, uh, the mechanics are fairly simple, you know? Um, and you are, uh, I love their, the way that they track their, you by going more insane, you become more powerful. Yeah. Um, that's kind of, it's kind of a, it's kind of a push your luck kind of thing because mm -hmm. that's also at, at some point in the game, that's almost a timer to you losing too, if you push yeah. far enough. So, so, uh, this is just one of those games that they, people just keep praying and praying for a season three. Yeah. I wish they yeah, just but, I mean, you know, Simon has to do their week long Kickstarter so they can fund other games like, cheaply shitty marvel united yeah i didn't end up backing that by the way good good thank you for <laughs> listening to me i almost did but i was like no because it was it gonna is, be i mean it was enticing i even i looked it up yeah. and i was like you know there's a lot of heroes that it could be fun i i know i won't like the gameplay i'd be like wow this is for children yeah the gameplay was fine if you played with the expansions it was right. it was still pretty simple and it was it was one of those you don't want to play like I would play it solo, but it's not wouldn't be as fun solo. Like it's, if you play, we I played it with the guys in Joplin. We played a four player game, and that was pretty yeah. cool because of stuff. But right. it was going to cost me to get everything from the first Kickstarter and this Kickstarter <clears throat> with the playmat add on. It was going to be like six hundred and thirty dollars. I was like, for yeah. this game, nope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this one Hopefully. is is my favorite. Um, uh, like Lovecraft, yeah, you know, type game. Um, I fell in love with the first time I played it, and I'm just want more. You know, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful game. All right, yeah, this one is 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 fantastic. I mean, I have I don't have the unspeakable box because I refuse to pay that much for an expansion. But hopefully, in season three, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> season three comes out, and then I can add it on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Number two. Oh wow! Okay, I thought I thought this was your going to be your number one. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to sneak on in there. It was really close. It was um, this one's probably my most played game uh, over the past year, I guess. Yeah, uh, I'm about 40, 40 some ep or games in. Um, Scenarios in. Wow. Yeah, it's. It's getting there. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I've unlocked a bunch of characters. Um, I did not back the Frost Haven, but I can. I'm I have a guy that I'm gonna take a pledge from to get the Frost oh, Haven um, <clears throat> for just a little bit of a markup. It's still not bad, but uh, yeah. I mean, this is this is one of those games that I have made such a direct 180 on because of it was I think we had made a list a long time ago and it was this was on my worst games of whatever year that was um 2018 eight, so yeah because it was on I remember putting this as my like number one worst game of <clears throat> of whatever year that was um 27 <clears throat> just because the hand management just did not go for me um I had a bad experience, I think, just because of who I was playing those games with at that time. They, I don't think they really understood it. It was just kind of a bad situation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Jaws of the Lion came out, and and one of the probably one of the most brilliant things that Isaac Childress <laughs> did was put that thing out, and that single handedly you know, slap me in the face and made me walk the other direction. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, now I've played much Gloomhaven. I probably played more Gloomhaven than you, huh? Oh yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. I mean I I mean I think I'm like twenty something scenarios in. Yeah. Um, and then I've started another campaign with my friend Devin and then we're doing Jaws of the Line together, so I haven't played that again. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but you have the you have the luxury of having leaving it set up. Oh yes, it's just like sprawled out on my table here. My it's all surrounding my computer here. So yeah, unfortunately, I 
my little can't uh, really dude. do that. <laughs> I mean, one, I have cats who would just knock shit around, and two, I'm just constantly recording. So, so yeah, that was a spoiler. More than me. <clears throat> I didn't give a spoiler. Um, okay, so yeah, wonderful, wonderful game. Um, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. It's just brilliance in a box. That's for sure. Yeah. This and I'm excited is, for Frosthaven. <laughs> I, I am slowly withering uh, my friend Devin down on trying to um, – because he, he has everything and a shit ton more for Kingdom Death. And I keep telling – I'm like, dude, just sell it. The game sucks. I'm, I'm getting there. And actually, the yeah. company itself is fucking everything over because they're a shitty company. And yeah. so, like, I'm like, dude, just sell it. And every time a new game will come out, I'll be like, oh, look, Gloomhaven, a master, uh, like a masterful game, $100, <laughs> <laughs> fourth of the cost of Kingdom Death. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, this one for sure will be up here, you know, and it'll be replaced by Frosthaven probably once I finish this game. And Oh, I mean, there. they're kind of the same game, honestly. Yeah. So, all right. Number one. What do you think? Marvel Champions, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. So before you talk about this one, yep. uh, I was slightly worried you were going to put Fallout. Oh, God. <laughs> no. no. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> so good deal. It, Fallout didn't even make the list. So. It was close. It, it was one of the ones. Because like I said, I had 100 games, a little over 100 yeah. games on this list, and it was one that just it was, fell off. This one – it was like when I started to make this list, uh, one, two, and three, I knew exactly what they were going to be. Okay. <laughs> this one is, it's, it's the perfect solo game, even though it can be played with two people, but I play with two heroes. It can be played with one hero too. I mean, they, they have it balanced nicely to do each. Yeah. I just like to do two heroes. That way I can kind of, <clears throat> you know, team them up and do different things with them you know and and try to just yeah, that's that's how i uh that's how i play it is every time a new hero comes out i just play it one yeah i, I don't bring anyone else in and i do that too i just i just like having the two just so i can have the old team up one person can jump fall back into into alter ego and the other one do it you know it's just kind of a yeah, I like I like managing the hands. I like having the combinations and see how they work too. That's kind oh of yeah, my, that, that's fair. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I haven't played Gamora or Star Lord yet. Uh, that'll probably be this weekend. Um, but this game, for it being, um, I don't know. You know, they the scenario packs. They, they I was worried at the beginning. You know, the game was cool in the base box, and I was mm -hmm. like, they're gonna have to really keep pushing stuff out or else this is going to get stale because they had had kind of that dead area there where they were just putting out a bunch of heroes but yeah. they weren't putting out any bad guys um and then that all got rectified once they put out um rise of the red skull yep that was badass um and then you know it's like it wasn't too awfully long after that is when we got the uh the galaxy's most wanted yep and that one I still, I still can't beat that damn thing. Like I have, I think Cat and I have only done two. Yeah, Ro uh, I can't, I cannot beat Ronan. Like, oh I just, I, yeah, I'm not even that far. Yeah, like, I, I'm, I'm too. The, fir the first half of the because you fight the collector twice. Yeah, the, the first collector was was pretty rough. Yeah, you get. I, I got through those guys. Uh, Nebula is hard, um, but Ronan is just. I, I just don't know how you in the hell you do it. Um, Who are you playing? Because you don't are you playing the two characters in the box. I started that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're like fuck <laughs> these guys. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't do it. So I'm I bring the Hulk. <laughs> well, I went to pre-built or not pre-built. I went to <clears throat> I created my Iron Man deck again. Yeah, Justice Iron Man. <clears throat> and then I pulled out Scarlet Witch. Um, and I was just trying to do those guys and. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, when you get there, you'll see. He's he's just he's rough. But uh, but yeah, just the the replayability. Of this they they have so many characters out now. 
enough bad guys out now because these boxes throw in uh, four bad guys mm-hmm. um, at no, a time. Uh, Five. Y- yes. Four in the galaxy's most wanted because yeah, it's there's... the collector twice. Right, but... right. Um, and it's just it's just nuts. Like because all those you don't have to play them in the in the deal. So just that just doubled more than doubled the 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 villain count just yep. in those two boxes. And so it's just infinitely getting that point, you know. And they're coming out with you know Drax and Venom are coming out next. That's right. And, yep, because Drax will be the final um, guardian. Yeah, and he'll be coming out pretty soon, and we should be getting charged for it before yeah. long. And then they did a different version of Venom. They didn't do Eddie Brock. They did. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's just going to be bonkers, and and I just don't see any end in sight. Because I mean, they could still do Fantastic Four. They could do X Men. They can do. You know, they need I to- still believe they're going to do up to Thanos. Oh yeah, that that's gonna like. I think the that what they probably could do is have the next box be Thanos and have it be his four children, and then Thanos. Well, and here's a theory, right? Because this is something I was thinking of. Because in the box of Galaxy's Most Wanted, there was the Time Stone was the only infinity stone in that box oh okay so i don't know if they're going to spread it out that far i and, hope they do that'd be and awesome throw, and throw an infinity stone per box <laughs> you know it, well that would make sense right because the first box had an infinity stone the the reality stone i think right um and then yeah so, so I mean, if that's their plan that'd be pretty that'd be pretty fucking sweet i mean yeah. i would love if this game turned out to have as many people as legendary marvel <laughs> right i mean it's and you know it's that, that's the i guess that brings up the other part of this is um the big thing about these lcgs just like with arkham you know um diving into a game like that there's a lot of stuff you need to buy yeah um when you do this you don't have to have every hero. You don't have to have every villain pack. You could buy the core set and then buy Rise of Red Skull. Yep. Or, and actually, what you can do is you can go watch Brad and I's interesting topics where we talk about the villains and the first heroes and then buy the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, and, you know, there may be some people that don't give two shits about Miss Marvel, and so they're yeah. not going to buy Miss Marvel, <clears throat> even though she's awesome. But yeah, Miss Marvel's pretty fun. She's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, none of them. None of them are truly bad. Right. Like my least favorite is Black Panther, and even then, mm-hmm. it's like I'd, I'd pick. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll play him. Yeah. So oh, man, dude, Star Lord and Gamora, they're pretty. Like they're Fantasy Flight. While they're not as the echelon of, of a company as they used to be, um, it's now quality over quantity. Like yep. they got Marvel champions and Arkham Horror LCG that are just extremely solid. Some of the best LCGs out on the market. And yeah, Marvel champions is, is fantastic. You need to work on their reprinting though, man, for a company sure. for just making a deck of cards and stuff. Like they have Arkham packs that have been out of, out of print for a long time. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> pretty slow. If, if you don't jump on pre-ordering them, I mean, that's kind of what they do. I think they kind of do a print on demand. Right. They their pre-order and then they, they, that's what they do. Yeah. So but anyway, yeah. Marvel champions was easily going to be my number one on this. It's just a, a superb solo experience. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this will probably end up coming out after my reviews of Gamora and, um, Star Lord, but uh, I played those two against Claw. They wrecked Claw. <laughs> like he was a fucking punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really haven't looked a whole lot because I know Gamora has a her uh, sword that doesn't exhaust or something like that. I've heard people talking she about. Has, um, she is very unique. And that's what I'm excited about is every hero that they've released has some has, has a uniqueness to them. Yeah. Like, I just need Punisher, man. I'd be happy if they get Punisher. Yeah, he'll probably be coming. I mean, if it, I would, I would assume that they're just gonna follow kind of the MCU. Yeah. Have, like they could easily a Defender set wouldn't be bad. 
You get Jessica Jones, yeah. Luke Cage, uh, Daredevil, and Punisher. Oh, yeah. no, it's not Punisher. Iron Fist. Yeah. The Punisher was loosely attached to him a little bit. Gotcha. But he kept killing people. <laughs> and they're right. like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, But anyway, yep, that is my top 50 games at this point. And there will be some moving around for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there you go. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that was Brad's top 50 of all time. Uh, if you guys want to see his 51 to 100, let us know in the comments below. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, of course, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.